and it is time. Our first best of three in a couple of days in a fight for survival right here in semi-pro between Supernova and AOE. Dang. After fantastic game ones and twos between two of these teams, we saw two very different looks, but solid outcomes. That we did. Even with the substitution in from Supernova, I just want to point out the fact that AoE did change a lot of their style. They were still focused on some team fighting with things like Orn and Aphelios, but the big thing is comfort for RBM taking over earlier on inside of the laning phase. All of these were things that I wanted them to accomplish from minute one of every series that they're in, because the more the, like gold that they have got on a bunch of their carries on a bunch of their members the easier it is to try to transition their mid game into team fighting pretty much at any point point. and in this game they weren't sitting back reacting they weren't waiting for plays to try to counteract them they weren't playing for response of any kind instead aoe were the ones with their foots on the gas they were the ones making these proactive plays to make sure that they could take over the map yes what happened in the early game kind of went back and forth a bit because supernova found a lot of tower gold off the back of zigs and rick throats and things like that but man, AoE just did not let up at all when it came to fighting over and over and over again. And this is the kind of uh, this is the kind of play that we've been expecting and what we wanted from a top level AoE for literally months. Ever since we last saw them at EGL, this is the squad that we expected to show up at Proving Grounds. Hopefully they can find replication of this inside of the third game to continue their play. Otherwise, it'll be Supernova making that upset happen and continuing their dreams inside of Proving Grounds. Oh yeah, Supernova too. Them, them being able to get as far in the OWA Proving Ground circuit, like already, you know, like people wouldn't expect them to make it into PG, but you know, like you mentioned before, being CLG, being Maryville, and already here, tough first game up against the first seed of Team Liquid. But right now, looking at the well old machine like we'd expect them to be. And one thing to note uh of two is that within the past two games. The first time, you know, AoE, they managed to get a couple of kills, but nothing off of it map-wise. And second game, Supernova got a fair amount map-wise, but nothing else in terms of leads. So there's always been a sense of disparity in terms of what both these teams are able to do and the response is coming out in terms of the entire game. So what I'm looking for right now is for teams to get advantages and capitalize on them because I believe that truly will be the team that be able to take this series home and move on to prove the grounds. And unfortunately, like we know, we are the loser bracket. So whoever loses here, see you later. Getting started very early inside of this game, marring a game that ends up going to like 35, 40, 45 minutes, something like that, like we've seen from AOE previously inside of this tournament against C9AM. It usually, yeah. again, this early lead seems to dictate a fair amount of the pacing that happens in mid game. Whoever walks out with more ability to fight the other tends to be the team that's going to capitalize on what happens throughout the entirety of the mid game. And so that is the important aspect is I think both draft and game planning have to reflect that on both sides. Your expectations expectation should not be we're going to take scaling champions and try to like wait through the earlier phases of the game no neither of these teams going to let the other one do that instead this has to be punches thrown very quickly inside of this game i don't care who it is it seems like junglers are the best way to accomplish that because in game one it was the trundle game two the kha'zix was doing exactly the same thing being able to be that response whether that issues the ban to be able to get that back into the favor of supernova does trundle get banned just making sure that there is not that punch back here for the side of maddie who's to say but we have that kind of idea idea coming up here and that draft is going to be a huge indicator of what it is that these two teams think is going to be their driving force here for this final game mm -hmm. consider we have the full roster back at it yet again supernova back on the blue side right so no real like rovex shape box like on this end like still the standard stuff of both of these teams but we do know that there's still some solid pocket picks i've yet to see out of both of these sides i'm still hoping I'm waiting to see if perhaps Lily comes through for Maddie. So it's been banned for both of these games. Like, I think it's only fair, right? No RBM got his Kha'Zix. I think Maddie should I get his Lily just to make sure that things are a little bit more interesting. Okay, I know you say it's not going to happen, but I myself, Dean, call, I'm a dreamer. Right, I just want to hope for the most interesting and bad things to happen. Like, I'm sad that you know you 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 forgotten how to dream, but I will still keep my hopes up. But like you mentioned, right? Just really interesting draft, though. I potentially even like we could see a pike yet again. We know that Super has brought that up before, but uh, I'm gonna hold my horses and just keep my heart uh, a little bit expectant for what we have in front of us. 
when we get into the start of the draft, um, we're also going to see that Lynx, of course, has stepped back in. Rovex is no longer yes. in that uh, you know, bottom lane role, so that is an important caveat, is that Lynx will be stepping back in uh, for the side of Supernova, having that same roster that they won a game at number one with. Um, like we said, that the picks and bans will change quite a bit of the game. Um, I want to know what kind of pressure that these teams are feeling. Like, if you're AoE, you have to be feeling a fair amount of pressure, even after the substitute and the win in game number two. This is still the squad that beat you. They beat you on blue side, and now they've seen your kind of, uh, you know, the trick up your sleeve with the Kha'Zix being able to be there. Um, you have to feel pressure being a team that came in as the number nine seed against, again, the bottom seed in the tournament here in Supernova, who qualified as the only, the very final team that was capable of taking a spot here inside of Proving Grounds. Um, I know mm. Supernova, they, it, I'm not going to say they don't feel pressure to win here, because obviously they want to continue. Uh, but the expectation coming into this honestly had to be that AoE was going to win this one way or another. And so Supernova, I feel like they have a lot less to lose inside of this series. And maybe that opens them up to be more creative, try some new things, uh, and make more mistakes, which is something that is uh, you know, sometimes beneficial when you're able to actually try things inside of a series, especially in these early games where that volatility mm. really can make a big difference. In fact, on the side of AoE, you're talking about things to lose, right? We've been seeing a lot of a lot of smack talk coming out of twitter as usual you know from the aoe squad from rbm in general but like it makes sense they're very vibrant personalities there's also one person i believe uh, who is part of the aoe or who we mentioned that if you know if we were to lose supernova he will indeed eat a shoe Hawk. so yeah hawk <laughs> buddy if you're watching good luck to you i hope you don't have to eat a shoe man but like Bro, this this is if you do, I cannot wait for that to be all over Twitter as uh, unfortunately as you will literally be eating your words. But I hope for the demise of neither the team. I just hope for the most interesting thing to happen in between these two. But Dean, one thing I want to go back a little bit to is one matchup right we've been hitting on almost the entire day has been uh, uh has been the likes of Maddie strong best though but i do want to take a little bit of attention over to the bot lane and talk about these two supports yeah we, we are we're getting zyko up against the likes of Clyde. um Clyde's kind of been known for roaming we talked about that during the course of the series i actually want to give a lot more of a spotlight here to zyko um zyko stepped in from very little competitive experience or a very long hiatus mm. from competitive experience stepped into an aoe roster that had very high expectations on it coming in that hadn't quite been able to capitalize on it yet and walked into EGL as a fresh face. Um, and from what he told us, he came in as an ex like a, just a communicator for the team, uh, somebody that helped out a bunch of the players, um, helps out Darkwings and Faisal, able to cover lanes like that. Um, but the communication is the big thing. Imagine kind of a team with these pedigree of like Darkwings, uh, RBM, Skestreams, Faisal, and they bring in a brand new support off the streets to be a very primary communicator, they immediately turn that into a qualification for Proving Grounds. I, I don't think enough actual hype is behind this guy for the kind of impact he had on AoE's success, both at EGL and hopefully here inside of Proving Grounds if they get to continue. So these two supports, they both are the newest mm. kind of members here on their respective teams, but Zyko, I think, has made a very positive impact. He's a great player, a great communicator, um, and I'm excited to see what he gets to do to continue on in this tournament, and if not this tournament, into his future career. As you go on into the draft, the right similar band so far, Supernova taking out RBM's Lee Sin, also taking out Faisal's Aurelia, and of course, RBM's Kha'Zix. They don't want to be able to face that, and AoE has to break my heart. They're taking away the Maddie's Lilia, sadly. And of course, paying a little bit more attention to Strong Pest too, but that's kind of been consistent bands across the board for AoE. And yep, they've, they've kind of stayed true to what they were doing game number two, taking away the LeBlanc as well. But okay, this is interesting. This is different. This I like. This is, okay, so game one, I believe this was banned away. Um, mm -hmm. I don't recall. Game two it. was up, in fact. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was immediately, yeah. And then uh, this game, it's been swapped out. Kha'Zix has taken off the board. LeBlanc taken off the board has been a bit of difference. Yeah. Just making sure you don't get any of those pure blind pickable type mid laners to prioritize Thresh. Clyde is kind of like, uh, barring just like roaming in general as a support, the other big thing he's known for is hook champions in general. Thresh, Nautilus, Let's Crank, Pike. Those are really big ones for him. So getting this priority and also taking it away from the potential of the Ophelios, it is an interesting start to the strat from the side of Supernova who have been running Trundle for three straight games. Yeah, actually, which, Dean, uh, I just went back and checked head right now. 
the Thresh was actually indeed up in game number one. They still opted to go for uh, that Galio pick. So this right now is a very different look coming up for the side of Supernova though. But AoE still kind of sticking true to what worked for them in game number two. And also picking up the Azir though. Supernova not left to respond to this. I can't imagine they won the Vagar pick again to this. Although it would be bad. I still have my hopes up for the Quirky. Like, it's just that's personally what I enjoy seeing and what I enjoy as a champion. And nope. instead, they will bring out a couple more of the circles we were missing last game with the Galio pick in the jungle. It, it is a it, it's a it's a pick that Maddie brought out against the side of Team Liquid a couple of times. It didn't work out for them there, yeah. but it has been kind of popular. All right. It's been getting popular here inside of Proving Grounds on a bunch of different teams. It provides early aggression. It's an AD champion that fills the role of some of the other AD champions with some of the early aggression. Team fights extremely well and can build quite a bit bulkier if you want to go for something like the Gore Drinker into Jarm's Fist, things like that, and go for more of a bruiser type Jarvan into tankier type Jarvan. You're capable of doing that. It makes as a team fight initiator and a go button that just other AD junglers can't not always match. It's a very useful tool for Natty to be able to go for something like a level 2 cheese, which he has now attempted twice in a row to top lane against the likes of Faisal, uh, but also to be able to team fight a little bit later. That kind of dichotomy is a perfect grab into a team like AoE where you want aggression to start with and also need to be able to team fight later to contest what they're capable of doing. Speaking of team fight, though, they do pick up the Braum yet again, a very defensive support on the bot side to respond to the ADC pick coming out from Vex being that Ferris, right? So that already denies what is potentially could be, you know, just a just chain of corruption to lock down a possible 2v2. So all that, all that opportunity just take in away. But out of midst, we've seen how A will respond. No top of the pick for them as of yet. The Supernova either. And so here we take that away. Cozy playing the chase two games in a row. Looked very comfortable on it. So as of right now, like I can give you the option for another funnel that get, that gives Supernova a win con as the Kindred taken away too for RBM. Okay, interesting. They want to deny as much as they can from the jungle pool here since you know at r4 they should be taking their jungler pretty guaranteed unless they've got something very spicy on the back end that they need to keep hitting until the last possible moment on the side of aoe mm -hmm. esports um and that's so that they can try to get their counter pick in the top lane once again for faisal something comfortable for him as they'll have to blind for cozy and that's why they're taking away blind pick top laners where it's like jc has been willing to do twice in a row now and then camille is the other one that's kind of just in general quite good um renekton is on the board which is something that's possible to be taken from cozy i don't know if he, he plays too too much of that champion specifically um you tend to imagine him more of like uh things like jace and also like aurelia akali are both uh also uh possibilities akali would be an interesting mm -hmm. little kind of uh like pinch hitting grab here for the likes of cozy in the top lane is that something yeah. that he's been very proficient on in the past and in a game like this that could be the kind of thing that they need to break themselves out if that cozy shroud, like we mentioned before, like is uh is kind of where that uh does derive from as sketch picks up the graves for here for RBM. So a lot of damage already on their side, that double ADC composition, and a little bit more selfishness on the RBM end, and you called it here, Dean. There we go. Cozy Shroud coming out to play with the Akali pick. Blind pick, Akali, mind you, too. And Lucian in the mid lane. So a lot of damage on both of these sides. I'd be interested to see how area of AOE actually responds to this. I think it's the Akali's set. Uh, she's a really solid matchup. And Fire is actually quite proficient on that pick. I wouldn't be surprised if that's picked up. And, but instead, the goal for the team fighting pick of the Orn. Going right back to what is standard kind of engagement with the likes of the Orn, you've got scaling in your Ezreal and your Aphelios, um, or my apologies, your Aphelios and your Azir. Um, this time though, RBM ups for more of a farming jungler. This is a much more passive composition than I would have liked to see out of the side of AoE. And especially with like what you've got on Supernova, where you've got Maddie can force, Chains of Corruption allow you to force. You've got a Kali for a lot of outcome potential. In fact, if, if you want to know why it is that he's so good, um, Cozy's actually full name is Cozy Shroud. That's what he renamed from. Yeah. Was, he was literally an Akali player back in the day. And so that was a big portion of what his champion pool was. Um, and then Strompus on the Lucian, also the ability to potentially grab some priority out of that mid lane, depending on what he goes for. I wonder if he goes for the area again. This is another one of those mage matchups that could be beneficial. Uh, but attacking this map seems like it goes very heavily to the side of Supernova to begin the game. So it's curious to me why AoE has really opted for this very defensive composition coming into game number three after early aggression really did work for them in game two. 
Yeah, and I believe they just expect Supernova to be a lot more proficient in terms of the plans they have right now, right? There's no real, like, so so far wrenches thrown into the mix currently. And right now, they saw what Supernova was able to do in game number one. It looked, they looked practiced, they looked calm, cool, and collected. And they allowed Maddie to get super far ahead of the game, especially a lot, especially having, you know, just all that prior in both mid and top side to go along with their jungler. And when Maddie and Strompus are comfortable, the Supernova are chilling. So I can't imagine they want them to have any sort of resemblance of like being like, you know what? We'll fight on our own terms here, Dean. Speaking of fighting, let's talk a little bit more about how these two competitions will interact. This is another situation which area of effect, they, they've got good engage across the board. I mean, when you're talking about Warren ultimate, he's got an amazing ultimate. He's got good like, kind of mid-fight engage as well with things like CC. Yeah. And then you got Braum. Braum's able to convert quite a bit. When you've got like double auto attacker between the Aphelios and the Graves, you're able to convert a lot of those can cause some blow stacks. Uh, you've got the ultimate to work with as well. You got Dark Wings on like the ultimate as well. Very easy. Oh, wow. They're going to catch Maddie this oh, so Yeah, again? Ooh. <laughs> That would have been another spicy fight bad, and yeah. like another solid start towards this game. You said they've always tried to go for the cheese in every single one of these games, although they don't find it this time. But Dean, this is it yet again. This is the fight for semi-pro. This is the fight for survival between both of these teams who definitely want to prove that they're here to play. Supernova, the bottom seed and AOE night so far, but both have a lot behind them and both want to show why they made it this far. I am elated to see what they can bring out on both ends. A game like this for AoE, where they have really put all of their eggs into the team fighting basket, it, it does show you at minimum that they're willing to stick to their guns, right? Like they, they don't yeah. have this kind of early game, like, kind of engine they don't have somebody who's going to be able to capitalize super super easily in most of their lanes you have a bit of setup when you have gravitum and then you've got a brahm in the bottom lane you can gank that with graves when you've got like uh when you've got the wall to be able to use the shuffle um it's capable of being capitalized on as well we see that number of times with azir players uh and then of course you have cc for orn in the top side so you can gank in some of these situations this feels like a game that will be very slow paced from aoe their job mostly is to just make sure they're not losing that hard in the earlier stages of this game um for the most part akali shouldn't have too much kill threat into faisal after just like the first couple of levels when items aren't really around barring any ganks that come through from the likes of patty or any sort of roams that would come through from strompus um and so i think it's just about making sure that they can track maddie properly not allow this jarvin to take over the entirety of this map pretty much from the yeah. minute one of this game uh, and if they're capable of doing that this game looks fantastic for aoe once they arrive into two three items yeah, because you know that Cozy wants to be able to get ahead as fast as possible and as much as possible. And especially in the board matchup, yeah, like it won't come to fruition, but tracking Maddie yet again, sticking with the same game plan they had in game number two, because they were able to do that so well. We saw uh, how ahead RBM got and how many resources he was able to funnel into Dark Wings when they consistently went with these early jungle invades. Sticking with the same plan though. Cozy definitely has to be unlocked on the Supernova side. Because if they're able to funnel all that into this carrying, then that means that just like RBM last game, here we will have a lot to fear with the burst potential from this Akali. As we see, just a uh, slight training back and forth. This like just casual stuff so far here, D. So far, mostly full clearing for both jungles, although they both ended up on bottom side here, which will be interesting to see as they will interact. The push is here from Supernova too, so Maddie should be able to just snag bottom. Scuttles so... that goes walking out. Yeah, the Guardian, thankfully, was able to get him out of uh, harm's way for the most part without having to burn any summoner spells. Uh, the Varus and the Thresh of Dominance here in this bottom side is difficult to deal with here for the likes of the Aphelios early game alongside the Braum. Yeah, although this Lethality isn't there all the way for the Aphelios, like, like oh, sorry, I should say for the, the Varus, though, it's like, still, just the range and the potential that one arrow can just snipe out your support, I feel does remain on the back end or World Psycho and Sketch Streams who are relatively, you know, like low range between the two, but you get low range, Trompus as well. After stepping up a little bit, but this Control Mage v ABC matchup, I mentioned before in Traffic to Dean, proven to be quite fruitful and at least given one solid prio nice. lane here for Supernova. Very nice. I love that backstop right there from Strompus because if Darkwings gets that first one off, he can TP back to this lane and probably not miss too much. Here, he's probably going to miss his tank minion off the back of just that one alone. Is it going to be the case? The race for it? No, oh, he's not going to matter. Oh. I thought it was going to matter. It ended up not mattering at all. 
Uh, so far, Cozy Ashley's super duper low ball. What in the <laughs> world? <laughs> Just offered this <laughs> one little shotgun shell. Oh, that's see where he is. Maddie is there. There's a TP as well. I mean, after Strompa still don't manage to get the flag and drag, but at least he'll save his way. I guess. And Maddie's going to be the one to pick that up, so it's a bit of gold on your Jarvan. How in the world is it that after all of this incredible League of Legends, Game 3, it is an Orn solo kill that starts us off? No, no flame to Cozy whatsoever, but like Orn. This champion, man, every single time you take your eye off of it, it is just destroying somebody with the amount of base damage it's got. Bro, like, here's, looking back on this, uh, on this replay here, being like, don't you remember? Wait, hold on. Okay, so he goes in, but yeah, like, this is, that makes sense. Like, he just takes the full brunt of the W, just those bellowing blows in, and the knock up back of that. Those brittle stacks early on, do a ton of damage when you're that squishy. But Dean, don't you remember when that Orn was like was literally the man you want? He was an assassin, he was a tank, he was an engage option. Yes. He was everything. Yes, everybody remembers the dark times that were the early parts of 2020, which were effectively set Orn top lane every single game when set was mm -hmm. disgusting beyond belief. More so than now even somehow. But um, I, I will say I actually loved the response from Supernova. Um they burnt no summoners because so Cozy went down without flash without burning flash or teleport on that play without missing too too much of the wave, as well as burning flash from both Faisal and RBM. He's trying to capitalize Ooh, on it now. Just murder doesn't land the shriek and flip, he but he is DS is somebody low. All, all the cooldown should be back up. On to Faisal. Uh, level five five, five, there's level oh, six. The there's the knock up. The second oh. solo kill for Faisal. That is a tough one. So close for Cozy. But again, like you said, the shuriken flip missing was tragic because it meant he lost that empowered auto attack. He lost the damage, which a lot of it is loaded into that shuriken flip. And that means that all of that extra execute damage that would have come out from the second casting that ultimate ended up going down. Misplay there from Cozy ends up giving Faisal a second kill in this game two solo bolos here for the top leader on aoe <laughs> if there was a carry in this game dean you could have said every other champion that is currently present except the Ord, and i would have believed you but yeah oh, the looking at this great. again oh yeah, just so oh just a small sidestep yeah. saves his life. At this point right here, I think you just have to bail. I, I do love the fact that he was able to dodge that riddle right there, but it put him into the wall so that the E was going to be the knockup, and uh, that was mm -hmm. what really killed him right there. If he dodges the knockup, he dodges the damage, there's potential maybe for turning that back into your favor just because you still have fuse, you still have auto attacks to work with. Yeah. But, uh, Cozy found himself in a really tough position right there. Yeah. You also just have the small reset from your ultimate, so maybe you could have just ran it back through the Yorn. But man, it's Faisal. Just continue to show on this top side, and mm -hmm. that's one of the main win cons here for Supernova, right? It's like Cozy needed to pop off here. Cozy needed to get as much resources as possible just to make sure that he could then have the threat of assassinating almost everybody here on AoE, considering how squishy most of the composition is. And just how disengaged heavy they are, right? If you have a cozy on your backline, suddenly things get thrown into disarray. Well, with this too, things are things are neutralizing a lot more. And Dean, you mentioned it before that if it, we can just extend it all the way up to that perfect twenty minute mark, get the first or second item, Supernova is losing out on a lot. So I I we don't care that much whether a cozy is going to pull a bunch of gold off this orb. This, this lane is pretty much a neutralizing lane in the first place anyhow. Two kills to Faisal is frustrating because it gives gold and experience over to the side of Orn that he did not need, and it enhances the ability for those ornaments to come through, tankiness of the Orn, it's difficult for people to try to burn through, but it's not the end of the world. The end of the world is if Supernova does nothing with this early game because they've got a Lucian mid, and they've got a Lethality Varus on their team, and they've got a Jarvan, and yet they have done nothing with it thus far in the game. The Rift Herald is the first thing they pulled, but they even lost first Dragon. They were tried to trade off for it. They tried to steal it away, but unfortunately it didn't come <laughs> through. Um, yeah, this is, this is more bullying from Faisal, but again, my, my expectation for Supernova is we yeah, gotta see a few more here. They go in already. Strong piss is one of the back. That is a huge chunk, but... They managed to get out, just this ultimates expended, nothing else. I see RBF happening towards the bot side. Oh Our damage being locked out, but no will grab it some. He has the white and green. He's looking keen, but he just can't find any more engages. But 
RBM's already there. He gets yeah. spotted out. Is it not like the blind eye? The Maddie here too for the spots as they lantern him out. There's a TP as well. The back end doesn't land a knockup too. But it's like everything missing across the board. There they go. There's one that lands. Oh, okay. Cody! Out one. Psycho gets out. Cody is here. He has to clean up. Backside. <laughs> oh, he gets one. There we go. Shaky Book doesn't land on this one either as he runs our way. Woo! <laughs> He didn't teleport. He sure can flip off a Faisal's teleport. <laughs> That's how he got into that play and ended up costing the kill. No AoE's way. like, okay, we got four people bottom lane. We've got a very low links. We have no ultimate, no sums really to work with. We can take this fight all day. Nothing comes through. And the shuriken flip of all things gets cozy into position to pull a kill off the back of that fight. Even if it doesn't mean that much, it's still the coolest play I've seen so far. Bro, bro, cozy's like the avatar, bro. It doesn't necessarily matter where he was, but when the world needs him most to land a shuriken flip, he lands it. I'll show you yeah, in the midst of this fight because I only barely caught okay. it at the last second. There's that thank you of is very much for showing this. There he is from across the map. He's a missile. Oh. Look at him go. Look at him go. And how how ridiculously frustrating must this be to not see a collie from anywhere able to get over onto Zyko and everyone's out of position. They can't even punish him. He just gets to sneak out the back of the fight like nothing happened. That's the greatest thing I've seen all day. That right there. This is it. Nothing will top that. Like, 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 we got a penta kill. We got soul kills. This All is right. it. All right, Cozy, you were solo killed twice by Orn. You just made up for one of those. That's how this works. <laughs> they give you back credit for one of those yeah. kills. I, maybe it makes up for both. Maybe it neutralizes it. I don't know how that works. Somebody, Man. Everybody can make their own decision. That was cool enough. Again, a, a traumatic kind of loss for AoE because they were in really good position to punish that bot side fight. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. not able to capitalize, and even giving more gold back to Cozy is a bit painful. It's not going to all of a sudden turn Cozy into this beast who can take the Orn in the side lane, but again, pulling some additional gold for one of these backline threats is still very valuable for Supernova for some of these fights. I, mean, I just do want to give a massive shout out over to our observers and our production who oh, have yeah. been doing a killer job all day, and like being able to track and catch that too is a fantastic play, but. We want to focus your attention again to the bot side yep. here, Dean. Locked on me onto one. Sketch nice. can't get away. He should die. Nice shield, but the kill goes over to Clyde instead. But Trop is there to clean up a little bit more. So bot side dead. Nice collapse for Supernova. Yeah, nice play there. That's the first force we've actually seen for Maddie. Unfortunately, he's the one with the Rift Herald, and so it would have been nice if he could have stayed alive, but but I mean, since Darkwings is here, and since RBM was around as well to try to cover for this tower, likely wouldn't have been anything more than just a normal two turret place that you would have gotten anyway, so um, now they get one more chance, maybe, with the respawn, they could try to run it up mid lane as fast as possible, thankfully, though, again, Sketchstream, Zyko, they died, but that means their reset time's up exactly with when Maddie died, so they get to come and cover mid tower, so again, probably just ends up being the Rift Herald going into two fill or two plates to end up going into the pocket the strongest here if they get that charge at all they do have to back up at least a little ways it should still be able to get the charge off get the hook off you're not the Zyko, but rbm is here they'd be going back up should already land yeah that's just a, that's just a solid pick on to Clyde. Well, uh, another but a collapse for AoE. It is a tough situation to be in because Supernova, they want to escort that Rift Herald from mid lane into that tower to make sure it gets the charge off. And they were able to do that, but they weren't aware of the fact that that Rift Herald was going to be auto attacking that tower from that range. And so if Brom, if Sketch Stream, or if Sketch Streams, if Zyko get in the way, maybe that doesn't get a charge. They don't get anything. So that's why around that area, Clyde stays forward, pulls Brom out of the way to make sure that that can't be the case, ends up getting caught off the back of it. I think the worth trade you'll take the turret plates for that but again it opens up dragon for aoe the scaling composition to continue to pull these early game neutral objectives off the board and again this is also one of the big ways to the aoe actually just stayed ahead of the entire game right previously they, they managed to get ocean soul last game so right now executing on a very subtle win con if they built up for themselves is is oh man at two but still taking these trades back and forth between Ooh, them Oh, is he is getting, getting a little bit aggressive. He has the Rift Maker. Oh, wow. One more recent off the ultimate. Oh, oh Very close. Barely can't land it, but still. That kill in general, too, is a little bit too close to call. Big props right there. Again, Cozy is competing very heavily against Faisal, who has these two kills, who has this DS advantage, and his team has pulled off a fair amount of plays across the map as well. So there is at least that props to be able to give him over to that side. 
Um, the two dragon advantage for AoE is there. The gold advantage, however, is on the side of Supernova. Combination of a couple of kills going into their favor, turret plates especially going into their favor off the back of that Rift Herald that did go down. Um, and Strompus is one of the biggest beneficiaries. Hasn't had the biggest impact yet inside of this game. Seen him only in that one bot side play. Uh, but still, with the likes of this Kraken Slayer, doesn't go for the Gale Force. Instead, opts for this, like, uh, back when, like, we first started to see the items get reworked. It was Stra or it was uh, Lucian was building Kraken Slayer because of the on hit passive being able to be stacked so quickly. And now that's just pure DPS output that Strompus wants in this game. He's getting stronger and stronger too. We saw with this just what kind of tear he was able to reign over on the AoE side of the previous two games though. One thing they want to hit on back again though, Dean, mm -hmm. is we're talking a lot about Zyko uh, in just the pregame too before we went in. But so far, right, we haven't necessarily been seeing him be unlocked and to be able to just try to help out the solo lanes. We're mentioning how he's kind of like the oil that keeps the machine running. He's there just every single time to match, you know, Faisal and Dark Winds anytime they're pushing out. But as of right now, you know, being the Braum, right, he's had to kind of stay by Sketch Dream's side to just ensure that this very immobile ADC does not get picked up consistently, though. But a job that he's done quite well on, considering Sketch Dreams, only died once, and although not the same start he's had for him before, he's done quite well as a supernova to get look bot side. Zyko's been a bit latched to the hip of Sketch Dreams since he's been kind of the late game insurance policy for AoE in the last couple of games. Darkwings, even on Zir, usually likes to play into more of a side lane type uh, build into the later stages and be a bit more of the initiator, kind of like jump in and use that shift as the uh, like team fight starts for a lot of what Supernova has been, or, or my apologies, AoE has been going for. So Sketch Dreams <laughs> usually takes up the mantle of being primary damage dealer. And because of that, um, and playing the Aphelios, which isn't that super strong early game against uh, what has been a variety of champions from Supernova. He has to keep him safe. So uh, again, Zyko a bit more latched to the hip than we normally see him for sketch streams here on the bottom side, making sure that this Aphelios gets to actually have a, a later stage of the game instead of just getting early. It would be quite ideal because said we saw all the sketch streams could do going in the later stages of the game, though, as we do go back a little bit into this neutral states across the entire map as of right now. But Looking at the setup, considering coming up inside of Supernova, they have about a minute and 40 seconds to set up around this boss, especially for this dragon. I imagine they want to try to fight for it, just to kind of deny that soul in con. We saw AoE is able to get for it. But, so, for the vision pressure, still remaining relatively even between these two teams, but that scuttle should expire. So, as of right now, Supernova, yeah, they likely might pay a visit to that bot site to just be up on everything they built up for themselves. As uh, Cozy has, uh, has a little bit interesting positioning as he hops over back into his turret, but mm -hmm. like he wanted to catch up Faisal. He did. Looking at everything that's happening across the map, we do have Dragon spawning in one minute, and I'm trying to watch what AoE is going to do here, only because when you have a composition like this, where you're, you're rocking this Ornn for a team fight, you're, you're willing to take most of the fights from top to bottom to begin with. And RBM mm -hmm. also is very loaded at this point with the Eclipse, some additional Serrated Dirk uh, with, with some extra lethality on top of it, things like that. And even the Ludens completed for Dark Wings, the Immortal Shield Bow, they have items that are necessary, I think, for team fighting to start. But I don't know that they want to really heavily go for something like that until they are comfortable that that team fight is always going to be in their favor. Um, we'll see if they think that that's the case, because they can give over some early dragons here to the side of Supernova. Now, you, you don't want to give over three in a row, because then all of a sudden <laughs> you have this massive influx of AD, AP that ends up going to the side of Supernova, and that is impact mobile for the soul point. Um, AoE is kind of moving into a river here. You have to think Supernova might be willing to take this fight. If they give up third dragon, this is another instance in which AoE is able to try to force around what would be fourth drake instead. Yeah. If Supernova doesn't come to this, oh, here we go. They catch up Fires of Red, we're trying to chunk him down, but he's perfectly fine. Then the Orn Horn, no knockoff on the backside though, but- What a change of corruption. Hello, Cozy's there as well, change of corruption. Live back, back on the backside, unfortunately, dodges everyone, Ooh, but Cozy. instead, look there, huge cataclysm though. But what, what can he get though? Maddie taken out, a lot of damage yeah. put out on the hook. So the Strophus gets a double kill. Nice Emperor's Divide to get him away from him as Supernova. One for three. Again, so far inside of this game, AoE has gotten themselves at least a comparable amount of gold. Two dragons as well help stall this game out. The fear that I have oftentimes with teams like this is like when they continue for dragon stacking, they have to make sure their team fight's always going to go in their favor. Here, picked off immediately is Faisal before anything significant could really happen. Yes, he lands a good ultimate. It only hits fly. 
Uh, my apologies, I said it was a good ult. It's not a very good ult. It only gets fly. Um, but Maddie mm. also gets a really nice flank into two damage dealers. Dark Queens and Sketch get to throw damage into Maddie. But look what's happening to the rest of the team. RBM goes down. Psycho is way too low. Dark Queens gets pressure. He has to ult just to get away. Uh, the flash burnt unnecessarily by Lynx. But again, when you have those two trapped in the back and can't hit anybody else in the fight, it's just a pure team fight win that comes through from Supernova, which trades a bunch more gold as well as the dragon over the side of Supernova. You could have just seeded that dragon, went and got Rift Carol, pushed the gold advantage for yourself a little bit further on the side of AoE, pulled tower so you could put some vision down. Instead, they opt for a 5 on 5 saying, okay, we have enough to be competitive, but not enough to purely win the way that they are right now. And that has given a footing back for Supernova in this game. Uh, this is big right now as as AoE control the entire early game on their end with the shutdown cozy too. So right now just getting him a little bit more on his end would be a lot of fun to see as two kills on the board for as of right now but right now we're looking at aoe though it's a like a little respawn back likely twofold as there we go there's the orn horn forcing out the flash for clyde they've been another potential pick but still everybody's staying a-okay they're all just cool off that it is AOE even being down about 3,000 gold right now to their opposition is not necessarily in a terrible place because you still do have ward items to come in. You've got your gold advantage. You have a, a Azir and an Aphelio scaling that you still have the ability to rely on. Uh, but all of a sudden, Supernova, who didn't make this massive impact in the very early stage of the game, have taken advantage of some of the mid-game fight that AOE has now opted for in order to get themselves a bit of an advantage. Also, to double down, uh, Cozy has come back from what was it, 2 and two solo kills for the 5 4 5 in the earlier stages, has pulled mm -hmm. two kills and an assist, and is looking good in the side lane, uh, able to assassinate damage targets. Even if Cozy is only able to get into what would be Dark Wings or Sketch Dreams or RBM, removing one of those damage threats is huge from this composition. Like you said, that is going to be the primary goal of this Akali. Um, also, Strompus, man, what is this build path? He goes immediately for the Bloodthirster right after the Kraken Slayer. You typically go for Gale Force because the ad added mobility is going to make it a lot easier to try to get on top of somebody like the Azir. But here, just wants to be like a, a sledgehammer and work your way front to back. No matter who's in front of you, you're going to do the damage. You're going to out-sustain them. Uh, that at least seems to be the impression from Strompus here on the likes of this Lucian build. I mean, I respect it. Right, because you saw what he's able to do in the previous fight, but he puts out a fair amount of damage, especially with that culling. So we do have to see if it comes out to fruition, though. Considering, as of right now, right, it is very much anyone's game as setting up vision on the top side, though. But Ding, I did want to touch a little bit on the top lane matchup for Koji, that being Faisal, who's this is only his first year. I'm actually like a, a, a competitor, right? Mm -hmm. And we see him having a fantastic series. Yeah, his his very quick adaption into amateur has actually been rather impressive. A lot of people um, in the previous split, he was on a couple of teams that didn't have too too much success, didn't make much noise inside of proving grounds. But a lot of people lauded him as being this like really talented top laner. AOE were the ones who kind of scouted that and said, okay, we're gonna bring him in, we're gonna have him around. Um, he's made his name on uh, a number of picks, mostly tank players. Wow, underneath the tower, oh. it's Faisal who's gonna go Speaking down. Speaking of tank. He's Man, yeah. Speaking about Amy, cursed him down and he is gone. We're sorry, Faisal. Yeah, my bad, Faisal. That's a, that's a caster curse if I've ever done one before in my entire life. That's even mm -hmm. more miserable because they were giving up topside already. Like, Strompus was already destroying top tower. Now on top, inner tower with no response. Graves is going to get up there first. But again, the ward in the, the Baron pit is the only thing that they have preventing anything else from coming through. Can they actually pull through this? This Lucian's going to still be a couple of seconds out. They don't really have all that much DPS. I guess the flag is helping them out quite a bit, but uh, it would still be difficult Aww. for this. AoE do love this kind of concept of being able to use this. If they can stall this till Faisal has CP, this would be easy. I think Strong, I, I think Supernova realized that. If they if they can't take the Baron fast enough to get it done before Faisal gets to TP into the fight, that is not a fight that they are ever going to win, and it's not a Baron that's going to be there after all. Either way, whether they all die or whether they, they end up snagging it or, or whatever that happens, uh, AoE are going to be the better back there. So good on them for back. What did, one thing to look out for as well is that that Cozy was also just chilling uh, just right outside of vision, but and could have potentially aggressed uh, onto RBM and shut down the jungler when he potential skill option. But just that, but just that nice little vision ward into the bush just barely does deny him that any assassination opportunities that could have come out. Right now, though, Dragon is the next to take for both of these teams.
five seconds left. <laughs> and if we're looking at the vision spread across the board, it is a little bit even though, oh. but both AOE Supernova want this as they try to execute on RBF. They do. Pushed him out. He's got sustain with the Eclipse and he's got the Yumus here, so he's got more than enough movement speed and everything else to work. Darkwings wants to try to solo. It looks like he's got scat streams coming over. I think they're they're trying to play a bit of a Baron Bait type game here. They know that there's not too much DPS and there's a lot of closing speed, especially with Faisal's ultimate. And so it's not really going to mean anything. Instead, AoE just end up pulling the dragon for free. Um, the response play also is just like not much here from the side of Supernova. They, they like pushed in a single mid wave. They're going to catch some of the camps. They got some resets out on the board as much as possible. The threat of Baron is the thing that I think they're trying to leverage as much as possible right now. But right there, they gave over this win condition, this this like infernal soul win condition to the side of AoE. More time for them to potentially stall out this game and get into that late game territory. Two items now completed for the Aphelios. Item and a half now completed for the likes of the Azir. Two items completed here for RBM. Things are starting to look better and better for AoE on this third dragon for this team fighting composition waiting to scale. And I have to look at Faisal on this too. You mentioned how he's like a fantastic engage on their end. I was gonna say he's been caught out a little bit by those hooks, but he's gonna get to any corruption. Cycle chunk down to half. So they just get out his flash. So kind of reducing any more engage opportunities for perhaps the glad perhaps the flash glacial fissure. But the less though, not much gotten out of that either. Yeah, honestly, the, the double ultimates do pull quite a bit of pressure from being able to invade into the jungle here, so they have to keep a relatively shallow vision line. Um, they're starting up with Baron. They, they, they know this is happening, I'm pretty sure, almost certainly. They yeah. need Strompus to do it almost certainly also. Like, if Strompus is there, Strompus can, can pretty much, like, just destroy this thing as long as he's not tanking the Baron, getting his damage reduced. And with the Bloodthirster, he could probably just stand there and tank the damage it does without losing any of his shield in the first place anyway. Uh, but he's been the one in the side lane, especially the top side, really making sure that that wave is constantly getting pressured, forcing somebody to respond to it as much as possible, trying to buy some space to put down the vision necessary to work their way into the enemy jungle. Um, AoE is just tackling that immediately by saying, okay, we're going to put five members mid, we're going to push out mid lane as you push out top lane, hmm. and work our way into the river from there, maybe even look to take down mid tower because the rotation for Supernova is a little slow. This is the second time they've tried this, so these around, they get another hook. Oh, uh, they get him get, again, but no flash this time to be able to respond as Cozy again goes right in the middle of the fight. So far, he gets a lot of damage in, but still this one pick right now for Supernova as he does a little bit of back and forth. This top tower will go down part of a Supernova as they're getting advantages across the map. Interestingly, uh, at, at no point did Moonlight Vigil come out. Moonlight Vigil probably brings down at least one member of that fight if used in the correct direction, if able to be hit, but it seemed like Sketchstream just was not able to get into position or didn't use it quite fast enough on the draw to be able to capitalize on that. That is now the second time in a row we have seen AoE take multiple members, four or five members of their team underneath the tower, one of them gets chains of corruption under the tower, that person dies, and nothing else happens. This needs to stop. Force under the tower for the fight, or don't do that. <laughs> See your options yeah. now, AoE. You gotta stop giving gold over to the side of Supernova. Yeah, they've just like also on the side of Supernova too. That's been like the second or third time they've set up this sort of Baron bait just previously, likely in an effort to catch out RBM, who just like which is why we also saw like both Strompus and Cozy just playing on the backside to see maybe if they can watch the jungle around and try to go for the 4v5, which where they would likely be very much stronger as I barely just misses that hook. So unfortunate there, and I imagine they would have likely engaged alongside Maggie and Lynx there. And if RBM goes down, suddenly the map opens up a lot more for Supernova as you reach back in the same neutral state. Look at Cozy, look how far up he is. He is. He was kind of poking his head into the jungle right there in... Uh, the, the idea is that like he pushed in bottom lane was kind of right there. They're looking for... Uh, sidestep though, so yeah, I was about to say they're probably just gonna try to get him. Locked down once so far, Darkness flashes in, oh, okay, got manages to get cozy! They only managed to get out though, flip on in, and, re and release, huh? but huh? on the backside! What? Wait, 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 we got... <laughs> RBM still there and it killed Maddie at the same time? That was all a distraction by Supernova to pull Baron on the map, but RBM is not full by <laughs> He gets into the pit, he kills Maddie, he steals the Baron! He can't keep getting away with this, Dean. He did this like, against, look at this. He did this against like, C9 and Kato or Amateur, I too. Know. He did, that's what got him into the 55 minute game, or like the 50 or so minute okay. game. He just sits here. Two. What happens? Get one more. Collateral like, damage. <laughs> he what? just kills him. He just walks in and kills him. Like, what in the world I, was that? 
really big meme, bro, doing some really big things. Like, and now what we thought was a pretty even state, although it doesn't necessarily shift over onto either side, like, at least the... Uh, now AoE, like, with the Baron on their hand setting up for the next dragon, Infernal Soul on the dock here, like, this is, uh, this is one that Supernova knows they cannot give away, the Baron already gone from their hands, one more win condition gone, and so might be the chances of them surviving in this game. It takes a bunch of damage. There's the Ornhorn. Knock up immediately and onto one. But man, takes a bunch of damage out as well. Looking in the back. Sex Guest Stream still alive. Should have gone with the flank. Cozy caught out too. But Psycho Super Duper low. We mm. get down chains of corruption. Art of tank. But it's still just the tank. As Shaq just goes in. Huge! Little cloud there from there on the back side of the catch. Are so many people. But RBM still blows him off. The shield, the Demacia. Can't do anything. The jungler is gone. The dragon is AoE. AoE. How am gonna get the infernal soul? No way. Okay, Supernova are so close to breaking that fight open. That Maddie ultimate was insane. I don't even know how Faisal ended up living that after the chains of corruptions. He able to sneak out as well, and somehow. AoE, they pull Baron buff off that steel, and then they pull Infernal Soul immediately after. They're still down in gold, too, somehow. After all these things, they're still down in gold, but it doesn't matter. The scaling has finally arrived. Azir is on two and a half down for like three, three items. You've got Aphelios nearing three items, if not on three items. Orn upgrades are now starting to show up. Orn is already in a place to be good. At this point, I think the bells are ringing for the side of Supernova, and uh, their dead are supposed to be bringing out. I don't know if it's possible to take yourself out once you've died, but Supernova's going to have to find a way, because AoE, they have a rove in this game. This, they've, they've got more than that, Dean, because now with the Baron on their end already kind of set to expire, they're not going to try to force down the mid. Instead, what I believe they should try to do, which they are doing, is just getting the side lanes more so in the control. Cozy's still on the bot side, able to respond though, but look at top side. You see all that gold going in the pockets of Skechstream and Zyko, right? They can push that in pretty easily with the Baron on their end. A Supernova, maybe a little bit slower the rotates. So that means that this tower is definitely AoE's. AoE now just gets to play this game out any way that they would play. They, they've got way too much right now for Supernova to be able to actually contest Damn. with. And it feels so bad because Strompist is ridiculously powerful. Cozy is able to eviscerate somebody in a fight, especially if Lynx is able to land some damage onto somebody. But it just feels like they don't have the ability to actually get these members into the right position to look for a kill inside of these fights. This has been the problem. Uh, like I said, how many fights now in a row have we seen that Strompish just hasn't been able to access anybody, that Cozy hasn't been able to full assassinate anybody, and not using this kind of early game advantage, not being able to press the issue enough, has now brought AoE back from almost a couple thousand gold advantage yeah. just a minute ago to a very advantageous position for himself. And we were talking about this in draft too mentioned that how is cozy gonna get to the backside how is cozy gonna look to assassinate everyone's squishy members of aoe answer he can't he can't even be allowed an opportunity to get there if he's caught up every single time he goes into the shop but they have vision on him like aoe are just ready for this take they've smelled and sniffed out a supernova wants to do and past it all they gotta do is just to be able to execute Elder is now the take here. If Supernova can stall, they could possibly get Elder if they have a for sure chance back into the game as Top Tower is also being taken over by Strompist. Baron is up in a minute and 20 seconds. A fair amount of factors here, Dean, but I am on the edge of my seat. Anything can happen here. Three minutes until Elder Dragon, which is uh, the only other really lifeline here from the side of Supernova if they want to try. The, the side lane is not bad for the Azir, where he's got like plenty of gold to work with, and now probably he's going to be able to complete the fourth item. They still do have a bunch of power in their back pocket, too, because like Cozy is on third item. You have like, a, you know, your, your Barracks is on third item as well, almost into fourth item territory. You've got power to be able to hit targets very, very hard. But with like it, it playing up against Infernal Soul in general with like a, a team composition the way that AoE is designed is taking a five on five is basically just a pipe dream at this point. You have to figure out a way to peel away members individually from the side of AoE. And again, this fight that's going to be coming up here on the side of the, like for this dragon, for this Elder Drake is so important for Supernova to be able to find some of these layers to pull off. If they're able to do it, 
they can deny so much. And even better, they can try to force a fight afterwards because that's going to be the buff that gives them the capability of competing with what AoE's got right now. If they can get Strompus to focus down individual targets with that item, with that Elder Drake, people will drop like flies. That is the only chance that they've got, and they have to play to it like it is uh, pretty much the only thing they've got left to do, because at this point, it is the only thing that's keeping them alive right now, is the prospect of potentially snagging that oh, oh, no, okay. Can I have to lock up Ardu after one? Cozy is just gone! Can't even get into the shroud. The rift becomes his invisibility. Scat trees. Oh, okay. There's a lot of damage, but oh, luckily the shield is make sure he stays healthy. Now four v five with no potential flank opportunities. And we can look towards the barrier, but they want the fight okay. instead. Knock up right immediately into the Jarvan. There's a support behind him. No one can get to him. That's two people down. And we just get the Baron for free. No contest whatsoever. Yeah, they're going to be able to drag the Baron out immediately. Strompus is trying to respond with middle inhibitor to try to combat the pushing that's going to come out from this Baron buff for the setup in exactly one minute for the Elder Drake. They're going to have members there. I don't think he gets the inhibitor, unfortunately. He only snags the towers, which is really tragic. If you get those powerful minions, maybe oh, no. there's a chance he now has to slip out without dying, which is going to happen. They're trying to feed as much gold into Strompus as possible. He should be able to walk out from this situation. Man, the gold lead only just flipped. It just flipped. <laughs> in favor of AOE. Just, this is insane. Infernal Soul with a composition like this is just such a death march. And yet Supernova still have these very kind of fleeting moments of possibility. If they can contest this Elder Drake, it's up in 30 seconds. Their members have to be there for it. Cozy's got TP to join. I, they just got to do something. They got to make a move for it because they can't just not do it. If they give up Elder Drake, AOE at that oh. point just walks in and takes your entire base. And Elder Drake with four dragons is the for sure death on Supernova. But Dean, they're on the cusp, like you said. They're right there. They can definitely just taste the flip as the Elder Drake spawns. We're going into final fight territory yeah, between here. both of these teams. Supernova stuck on the backside. They have more than enough damage yep. from Sketch Stream and Darkness to be able to just take it. The perfect you find. The horn goes out to catch the Auto one Immediately though, Elder Drake's still alive. Look at the back end. A lot of damage. We put up a strong pass. There we go. The calling. Not gonna pop anybody Side. yet. But the drop yep. down. Man, he's dead. Half he's dead. life. That's no, it. they're just so low. Just shut down across it. the board. Cozy manages to get one, but with the jungle out of the picture, Clyde is the next target. He's the last one to tell the tale. Supernova get blown up. That's the ace. And that might be the game. Oh my goodness. It, it was Supernova had such an incredible start in that mid game around that third dragon to potentially compete against AoE. They pull this massive advantage and it was the Baron throw, man. The Baron throw again. AoE get away with it. RBM gets away with it with a kill and a Baron steal. And this is the one that saves their lives instead of just being the one competition. They haven't played full Elder Drake. They're trying to think that I feel like they should have just gone exclusively for base right there. If they had more than enough time to try for it. As now, I mean, Elder Drake is almost certainly going to give them more than enough power to just walk down any lane that they want. AoE are just waiting at this point to take that dragon so that people can respawn. So that all five of their members can walk in ablaze with this buff and take oh away the game. God. Continue on improving grounds. Oh my god, Dean, bro. We said, we kept saying that so much damage that has the potential. But look at this fight, though. Like, Maddie tries to go in onto Darkwings when the Elder's still half held. And with him being gone, like, it just seemed like Supernova were just on different pages at what they wanted to do. And we mentioned the game number one, when Supernova are on the same page, they're a well oiled machine. But unfortunately, the rust might be showing here as we get to game three. I gotta be honest, I, during, I think Strompus had a lot of foresight knowing not to drive to the right, which was to be, per prevent himself from taking a bunch of dead soldiers over the wall from, because of the superior positioning of Darkwings. But had he been able to focus down Faisal with the rest of the team, maybe there's combat to be had if you've got sub left in your, in the tank. Maybe he can bring down at least one target, but again, because Darkwings positioning with those soldiers over top of the dragon wall, that incredible little decision. This is it! They pop on it, or horn knock up on two already, but with the Elder Dragon, yeah. this is Supernova's final stand here in the base. They don't necessarily have the minions, but AoE right now are looking to be able to chunk down the base, bleed out Supernova one after another. A TP as well here from Darkwings. They want this fight, and they're going to get it. 
It will. This is the last little stand. I don't think there's going to be a possibility. Supernova's got to make a miracle play to make sure that they don't get brought down. How easy it will be for the side of AoE. If they can stall out the Elder, maybe they can take a fight underneath their Nexus Tower. That is tough yeah. to do. They actually did an amazing job clearing that wave. Big props to them preventing at least one more yeah. stepping in. And now, more time burnt off of this. It seems like AoE, they're just going to walk up into the jungle, probably put down some wards, push up top lane as much as possible. There is no interaction to be had with them. Supernova lives to fight another day after the Elder Dragon has gone down. They are still in a horrid position in this game. But they have not breathed the last breath yet. No, they have not. They're still alive. The Heart of Amateur is around here to stay, but for how much longer? Baron is on Elder Dragon is fired. There's the Horn Horn catch up at the back end though, but no strong pass. They might be looking to get blown up. There's a third inhibitor down too. A lot of yeah, damage already in. Strong buddy. pass is a lot. The collateral damage will assassinate no okay. one though, but Cozy. Oh, here Cozy just inching out of that fight. Ooh. Okay, there we go. Super they're alive. Live. They're alive they again. live. <laughs> they're down three full inhibitors, but they got two Nexus Tower to work with, what? and they're not out of the game yet. Uh, I, I, to say they're not out this of the game amazing. yet, the position they find themselves in against a Nazir and Aphelios and Graves on late game itemization with an Infernal, this is not good Ooh. at all. There is almost zero chance they win this game. But they are not but, done yet. So no, stand, they are not. So there's still a chance. So you're saying there's a chance. A slim one. <laughs> a slim one, definitely. Very, very unlikely at this yeah. point. With the power Elder. that he brings with their superior team fighting, there's almost nothing that can be done. I mean, Elder finally manages to expire. Strong Piss is also TP it in. They know they need this Baron if they want to stun a, a little bit longer. It is a 5v5. Cozy is in base because he has to defend it. All these super minions could just tear them apart. Like at the back of the Clyde, way too far forward. He's just Ugh. gone. Now it's a 3v5. Cozy's TP in while the base is torn apart. Dark Wings and his soldiers are asserting their dominance on Summoner's Rift against your Supernova. Now Maddie knows oh, it's last no. end. They'll try to keep them contained before they explode all over the entire rim. Everybody. And it's just, just Licks left to tail, Dean. It's just him to tell the heroic tale of Supernova who tied their damnedest. And they were so, so close <laughs> as area of effect esports will move on. They will. What a battle here. <laughs> Taking it all the way to three games. AoE take this to a 42 minute victory. Elder Dragon, uh, you know, Infernal Soul, everything, the whole kit and caboodle here for the late game composition. And they end up closing it out. Supernova, how many times I just wanted them to try, fight, do something, and they end up just bleeding out slowly. 42 minute death. Horrible to watch. Uh, one of the best pipelines that we've seen from Amateur into Academy and into some of these other leagues develop and lose out in a way like this. But man, it was certainly interesting from top to bottom in this final game. Here's the thing, though. Like, Supernova, right? You would expect a team after the game one they played up against Team Liquid, right? Uh, it was an extremely tough loss to be able to come back from. Mm -hmm. They still did. Like, they still were able to come back. They fought their absolute heart out. They got game number one off of some fantastic plays from Maddie Wright taking over the early game. Game two, unfortunately, just a complication that wasn't able to come out to fruition, but still game three, it was right there. It was in the palm of their hands, but AOE though, right? We knew they were the favorites in this matchup and they're able to show us why. Oh, this is the hero point, too. This is what happened in the first game against C9 Amateur, which is what RBM did. He ended up getting into the pit. He pushed out Maddie because the potential damage to come through somehow with all that burst end up snagging the Baron from 2000 health, 
props to him knowing his damage output being able to snag that one away because that was pretty much the saving point right there for the side of aoe again i want to come back to this fight because this was a really important fight watch strompus because again he kind of gets into a tussle against the side of rbm but he ends up losing into a graves at short range which is fair yeah. look how he could have done on the right psycho might have gone down you had the zonius come out from sketching so maybe weisel goes down this fight looks so much different if he's able to stand over there but again it's dark wings who's positioning i cannot laud enough here or that ability to be able to shut him out from the right side of the fight. And of course, Strompus being the player that he is, he recognized that, went for the play, ended up losing that. And then that fight around that dragon pit ends up going over. That was probably the nail in the coffin before the actual nail, which is this final fight where they attempted to go out. The TP from Cozy kind of uh, ended up being a little bit late and unfortunately yeah. everything fell to pieces. And Lynx just stuck the has to run away. He has no mana. He can't do anything. Oh, man. And he even has the GA to boot. That has to hurt a little bit. But we do have our interview almost prepped and ready as well. We're going to talk to the man himself. RBM, really bald meme, or should I say really big <laughs> meme, bro. Welcome, homie. How you doing? I'm, I'm pretty good. How about you guys? <laughs> <laughs> bro. I mean, we've got a smile on our faces. It was a fantastic day of games, and I'm happy you guys gave us the best of three. Let me just start it off real quick. Bro, you can't keep getting away with this. How do you keep getting these Baron steals over and over again and just, like, extending the game? This wild. I mean, uh, well, my teammates love to say how old I am, and, like, people play me for being old. So, like, if I'm old, how do I win the 50-50 every time? I'm not really sure. But, um, yeah, I mean, we shouldn't be in those kind of positions, right? We suck, but whatever. Like, Supernova played really well today, so that's what it is. So talk to me, I guess, about what happened in that third game, because things started to break into pieces on both sides a little bit. But Supernova did get off to a pretty significant lead, and your, your Baron steal, your Baron kill, yeah. that definitely kind of turned the tide. But up to that point, what was communication like? What were you guys trying to focus on to make sure that your comp could get where it needed to go, even down that much gold to Supernova? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, in the end, they just got impatient and, like, grieved because they were going to get outscaled eventually. And they just, like, two-man the Baron. And then they fought mid at the same time. So, like, they're fighting 4v3 on mid. Because I, I told them, like, like, thankfully, I can just trust my teammates. I'm like, all right, guys, I'm just going to go flip the Baron. Like, you guys, good luck in your fight. Uh, like, Shropus was just one <laughs> me dining so hard this game. He played so well. Like, so I was like, all right, forget it. I'm just going to go flip the Baron, see what happens. And, like, Graves' combo is, like, really easy to steal Baron with. So... I just pressed all my buttons and I got it. It's what it is. Man, not only did you steal a Baron, you also killed Maddie on top of it as well, which was on its own, like just genuinely impressive though. What I, what I do want to hear from you here, RBM, like it's like, man, like coming back from this game though, going back a bit into game number two, when they brought in Robex, did that kind of throw a wrench in your plans at all? But considering you got the Cossacks, I can't imagine it did. Yeah, I mean, um, it really sucks that they had to sub out Lynx because of his internet going out. Like, we don't yeah. really want to play against the sub either. Like, and Lynx obviously is a better AD carry than Robex. So, um, you know, that part was really lame. But um, yeah, it didn't really change our game plan at all. Our game plan was just don't let Strop swan me down in the game because he has had like a crazy split this split. And we were like, okay, mm -hmm. just ban, ban him out and try to get a good matchup for mid. And Darkwings performed really well when we got him those better matchups. And, I mean, talking about some of your teammates further, I know this is Faisal's kind of first split being on a team that got this far, improving grounds coming here. Same with, like, Sketch and some of those guys. Um, you had the experience of coming on with Zeus, so what, what was it like kind of being the opposite side of that, being the one who's been to proving grounds before, being the old man that you are flipping barons constantly, um, still winning them somehow? Uh, what, what, you know, what was it like kind of experiencing that with some of these, kids, some of these kids, I guess I would call them, uh, and what it is and what was like kind of coming through proving grounds and getting their first win here? Yeah, well, I mean, to be honest, I think I'm the biggest kid on the team. Like, I get way too hyped too fast. Like, I start popping off. I'm like, let's you know, go, like, I, like when I got that Baron, I look like, I have to have check backs in comms where I'm like, okay, calm down, calm down, <laughs> like, I need that in comms, so, like, I'm kind of babied <laughs> by my younger teammates, too, because I'm, like, going too crazy, but uh, Faisal is, like, super, like, he doesn't get too hype ever, but he's always, like, you know, he's not, like, tilted and stuff, you know, all my teammates played so well today, um, yeah. yeah, I was really thankful, and they trusted me a lot, too, in draft, like, just to say like, I don't care what jungler they pick. I don't care if they flex this trundle somewhere else. Just pick Kha'Zix. I'll beat him with anything. 
was like super good. And then I got like raised into Jarvan pick when they could have flexed the Jarvan everywhere. And I just say I don't care. Like if you if they put a jungle, I'll want me to end the game. So it's like like yeah, my teammates just had a lot of trust in me today, thankfully, and I was able to deliver for them. And honestly, that you did, man. The final two questions for you, the RPM. Like, what, like, especially after this win here today, like, what are people not saying about AoE or maybe about you as a player that you want them to be saying? <laughs> honestly, there's not much to say about AoE. We're kind of bad, but, like, if we turn it up in scrims, figure it all out before our next match, we'll be okay. Like, we just have a few things that we're, like, really, really bad at, and we know we're bad at them. So, like, we'll be fine. Um, about myself, I mean, obviously, I'm trying to prove myself much more as a player this split. Like, last split, everyone's just like, RBM's laners are so good. All of his teammates are so good. Like, he's just carried every game. So, like, okay, then I'll do, like, I'll carry the game, like, if I have to, to show I'm good. Because I can do anything, right? Like, if my teammates are, like, like need my resources and I need to play, like, jungle dog role, I did it last split. If I need to 1v9 the game, I did it this split, right? So, I'm just kind of showing my versatility as a player. Massive respect to you on that, your front homie. And any final shout outs and things you want to get across before we end it off for the night, though? Uh, yeah, shout outs to Supernova for sure, especially Strompus. You, you guys had a crazy good split. Be like really proud of yourself. I know it feels so bad, like going out. And, and you had like new support too. Like you guys played really well. Huge shout outs to you guys, especially Strompus, man. Like you had a crazy split. Congrats, man. Um, uh, shout outs to all of AOE, the whole org. Thank you for actually paying my paychecks and caring about us as players. Um, and shout outs to all my friends watching, all my MSU boys, um, my IRL boys, and of course, shout out to my girlfriend, Grace. Thank you so much for always supporting me. And I will hope to make you guys proud and win the next series too. All right, man. Really appreciate you being on, bro. Fantastic series. And I cannot wait to see what you and AOE do throughout this entire losers bracket. Amazing stuff. Thank you. Appreciate it. Dean, with that, though, we have reached the end of the night, though, man. This was a phenomenal day of games. And, like, I got to say, I'm glad we finally got a best of three. But give me your closing thoughts, though. Man, this is the second time I've covered AoE. And two times in a row, we've had games that ended up in Baron flips that went 40 plus. Like, you're not allowed to take <laughs> me off of AoE games, man. You want long AoE banger series? You got to have me on there. That's like the only, that's apparently the only cure for what ails you if you want long games. But, um, had our first best of three series. Another team knocked out. Really unfortunate for Um, that's three of our AM teams that have been knocked out so far. But, um, tomorrow we have Academy teams playing for that. So one of them will get knocked out tomorrow uh, as well between those. Yeah, those games are actually really good games as well. TSM, GGA, and then uh, mm -hmm. Wildcard versus Resolve, two of our better amateur teams taken off. So those are going to be some great games as well. Supernova has a lot to be proud of after this series. And I think they can go home with their heads held high considering just the phenomenal performances we saw from them although due to some unfortunate circumstances right at the end of the day we know that we played their hearts out and they deserve every shot and every spot they get but all that being said thank you for being by my side the entire day thank you big shout out to production observers for keeping us sane and making us like beautiful almost the entire time and thank you all for watching we'll be back tomorrow same time same place but until then i've been ravishing grabbing still was ravishing on the internet y'all have a good night peace